Okay, welcome to Simeon's Pirates, everybody. This is the 2004 remake of the 1987 classic by the same name. Simeon's Pirates has always had a reputation as being a very humorous yet very in-depth game. The mechanics themselves are quite simple and everything is controlled via the number pad, but the depth of the game comes in many different flavours, which I will get into as they turn up. Now first of all we've got to sign up for crew to go get to the Caribbean to go save our family and avenge the, the fact we were pushed into the life of a hermit. So we're going to choose our, first, our standard name here, Red Star. Um, first of all we have our experience which is basically our difficulty with Swashbuckler being the hardest and Apprenticeman being the easiest. So we're going to go with the Middle of the Road Adventurer. The only difference between Apprentice uh, apprentice and journeyman is you get prompts on the screen and you can't use your start date. Essentially, this is tutorial mode. So we go for adventurer and we have to use our skill. Now, obviously, most of the stuff is planetary. Fencing, you're better at sword fighting, gunnery, better at gun, navigation, better at traveling around, wooden charm, better at romancing people. Do you know one that really needs to be explained um, has a major impact on the game mechanic is skill of medicine. Now, what it says there is improves your health and extends your career as a pirate. That's right, you get older and you can die of old age in this game. Uh, so ideally, the plan is to retire before then and save your family before then. Because as you get older, you get slower and it's you don't notice it straight away. But eventually, you start realizing that um, charging up to a ship and trying to stab them in the face isn't always going to work. And in some cases, maybe a bit dumb. So... We're going to go for a skill of fencing, because I like the board chips and obviously being able to be quicker with sword play from the very beginning is going to make a huge difference and hopefully offset the aging. The time period we're going to set is um, the 1640s. I choose this because, as it says there, Spanish military power is a joke, meaning we can just go along and plunder all the Spanish ports we want. The main problem is that um, the main flaw in this is actually uh, the treasure fleet, which we'll have to watch out for. This will allow me to concentrate more on the actual storyline rather than, oh, I'm just going to go and I'm going to get money to keep my crew happy. Because your crew can get angry with you and they can mutiny. I've had it happen to me before and it's not fun. So here we have, you know, the four different countries in the Caribbean. Or the four major countries in this game at the very least. We've got the French, the Spanish, the Dutch, and the English. In fact, the French guy just looks a bit he looks really drunk. The Spanish guy's like, Yeah, hey, I see you there. Looking at me. Mm. Dutch guy doesn't give a crap. Look at him like, fuck this. I'm Dutch. The English guy's are like, come here. I wish to tell you a tale. Um now, I haven't really played the other nationalities before. The only thing it really changes is your starting city. If you want to, you can work with any of the nations. You just gotta be prepared to, you know, work, you know, get them on your side a little bit. The advantage is the one, first one you start with will automatically offer you a letter of marquee, which will allow you to pirate legally the ships of other nations. Well, the nations which are at war with the one you're with. And as the English in this time period love to declare war on everybody, we're going to go with them. Right then, I'm going to shut up while we watch this uh, introduction.
And so, we arrive in the, in the Caribbean, ready to pursue, pursue our quest to regain our family and honour. As you can see during there, we managed to get ourselves our hands on a ship. So we'll, we'll start by having a look at the actual ship we own. It's a sloop, which is basically a small you know, scout ship, the best way to look at it is. We can upgrade here, but we can't afford it at the moment. So we need to get some pirating done. So, what do we do? Let's talk to the governor. Maybe we can get our letter of marquee and start getting some money. Ah, oh, maybe this is star. Please come in. You may be interested to know we are at war with the evil Spanish. I am pleased to offer a letter of marquee which authorizes you to plunder and sink the ships of our enemies. This map will show you the nearest enemy city. It's the Spanish city of Trinidad, which lies a long distance to the south. Not that long, we can deal with that. We can work with this, we can work with this. I'm about to send the brig Oceana to blockade Trinidad. Perhaps you would like to tag along and pluck a few Spanish prizes. My alarm boundary went off. I apologize for that. Good day, Mr. Resta. Ha <laughs> ha. So we met the um the governor. And he gave us a letter marquee meaning we can go and then well, basically bother some no bother some there, there, there. bother some Spanish. Let's get to the tavern and see if we can get some more information, because you know if anyone has ever played watched Power of the Caribbean or played any sort of game ever, you know, you know the tavern is the best place to get information ever. So let's go have a look. So there's four things we can do here. First of all, we can talk to these men who want to join our crew. That number will change according to how many how many people we have already, how popular we are, etc, etc, etc. But we're going to welcome aboard. Because you can always do more men. Here we have the trader. Who shall share information or sell us an item. Then he'll give us trading information about this place. It's always useful, but I'm not going to be playing a trading lifestyle in this one. I believe that the cannon is more persuasive than I have spice. Tell me where my family is. We're going to get them. We're going to get as many as we can. Ooh. That's an, opp that's an opportunity right there. Near the city of Trinidad. Well, we're going to Trinidad anyway, so... We could quite possibly... Kick his ass, and if he's got a better ship than ours, that's always a possibility. So the bar wench will give you idea about local pirates, your position in the world, um, how people view you, etc., etc., etc. Now the innkeeper will tell us about the the beauties of the world, the rumors, and other bits and pieces, which is always useful. Zutana, indeed. So there we go. One last thing we want to do before we depart is we want to talk to the merchant. Now we have three months worth of food already. And we have some room in our hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy some more food just to fill ourselves up so we have seven months worth of provisions. So regardless of how long it takes to find someone to kill, we should have enough food for the journey. So with our business concluded, let's sail away. Now we're going to head south. What is that there? Nice merchantman. Okay. So, a little sloop here is not the best ship in the world, but it's by far not the worst. It's fast, it's maneuverable, but doesn't have much sting to it. And it's not one of my favourite ships at all. Um, everything goes well, we should get our hands on one of my favourite ships not too far from now. Here we go Trinidad. But before we go there, let's go check out whether it's pirate. You can change the views in the nine key. Give us some more. Oh, here we go. That's an English settlement. Okay, we don't want to do that. Oh, there we are. I know who this is. No, he's coming to kill me. He's coming to kill me. I feel like doing something a bit stupid. Let's go. I think I can beat him. I think I can beat him. That brigand is much better upgraded than ours and it would be a great ship to start off with. So, 
It's where we go for ramming speed! Ow. Slime into the side. Now we can choose our weapon. Now lastly is longsword, rapier and cutlass. As you can see there, we got the versatile longsword. Excuse <laughs> me for a second. Sorry about that, I had a sneeze. Um, the versatile longsword, the quick rapier and the defensive cutlass. Now my personal advice is to go for the cutlass because the better you get defending, the more likely you are to survive for a long time during this game. Especially at the higher difficulties. So it's a necessity of the higher difficulty, to be honest. So here we go, we swing down and engage them in single combat. As you can see, it's a rhythm based system, so we respond to his attacks and encounter. We're already kicking his ass. Now we have to defeat him before our pirates die. Because if we don't, he'll just disarm us. I'm gonna push him back. Get off our ship. Ha! -ha. Ah, we missed. Or did we? Bye bye. Victory is ours. So, of our successful raid against him, we have conquered his ship and convinced seven of his sailors to join us. We just thought there'd be more considering the option is otherwise, you know, have a boat or die. <laughs> Bit dumb on my mind, but what can you do? Welcome board lads, you're the wise ones. So with a mighty amount of plunder and a new ship at our hand in our hands. A actually quite a substantial upgrade over our current ship. Our current ship's 8 tons, this is 60 tons. And has considerably more supplies, more capabilities. So we take food, we can take everything we found on board, and keep the ship. Right. So fleet status. It's now our flagship, and we're going to rename it. Actually, no, no, you know what? <laughs> People in the comments, you can choose to rename the ship according to what you want it to be. So, we're gonna head over to Trinidad. Early in the morning, yar. Not much it coming from Trinidad at the moment. It's got a large, it's got a large troop force. For sure. Actually, look at the map. Let's figure out where we should be going. Where the biggest com concentration of Spanish ports? If we continue along here, we should find something. So you zoom out. See, this is also before Port Real existed. So this is before the whole uh, parts of the Caribbean time frame. All right then. So my think my thought thinking is if we go along the south coast here, we've just got Spanish port, Spanish port, Spanish port everywhere. All the way through to like, around no, we don't need to get to the border, we can just cut through here. The only real ally we have in this area is Caraco, which we can use to resupply and upgrade, etc. Let's get going then. Ooh, ooh, hello. Hello, what are you? Treasure Galleon? Oh, our time's coming to the end here for the first part, so in the next part we will engage the Spanish treasure fleet. See you next time, ladies and gentlemen.